Eric actually owns a shirt that I own, so I'm already rooting for him. That's a Cleveland, Ohio referencing shirt. Cleveland known for two things primarily, factories and sadness. Correct. So the joke basically makes itself. It does. That means he must be a Cleveland native. So, Eric, best of luck to you because you're playing against a heck of a player here in Josh McClain who's starting off with a just a 1-1 loam line right now. Needs a little bit of help. Just a little fell off the Sacred Foundry. Brown just all started off with a flooded strand for his Jeskai deck. After the World Championships and just sort of the recent developments of the modern metagame, we are seeing a lot more blue-white and Jeskai-style control decks crop up into the metagame than we have uh, in the months and years previous to that. It looks like Eric Brown does, Bowen, excuse me, does not have a second land, which is unfortunate for him. 25 lands in his list. Did not get a look to see if he had already mulliganed. Here's the stopping ground. Lone Lion all grown up. Mm -hmm. Proud of the little Graduated. Fellow. Reached its potential at an early age. <sighs> oh, I see. Discount double check lands. Okay. That, can we get that Twitter account deleted? Yeah. You That's... are not allowed to participate anymore. Nope. You've lost your privileges. Here's up. Oh, come on, Josh. Play the Kurt. Oh, he's going to play another Lone Lion, then the Kurt Ape. There Love we go. it. Better to have two Lone Lions in play than two Kurt Apes if your opponent has Core Firewalker. Already playing around it. That's See, why he's the best. What's important here is that both you and Josh have every angle covered. Yeah. Although that, that is even not necessarily true because then you have to cast the other Kurt Ape and then he gets one. Yep. See. And I guess your attacking spread's the same, so. Arid Mesa is land number three here for Josh. It's probably time for beatdowns. So part of the reason that we're seeing more and more copies of Zoo crop up in various forms, the printing of a Tarkus command. Extremely powerful for aggressive red strategies. If you're playing Burn, it's just another skull crack with some more flexibility. Plays a little bit better against Leyline of Sanctity and, and so on. But the real bonus comes when you start playing with a lot of creatures because the plus one, plus one effect starts adding a lot of damage. And if Bound here, for example, goes for Lightning Helix on one of McLean's threats and a Tarkus Command is involved, just ring the bell. This one's yeah, over. over. Way too much damage. Steve Vince. Entering the battlefield untapped. Bound going to have to take some damage here. does look to have at least one burn spell in hand. It is a lightning bolt that's going to go after Kurt Ape. You mentioned Atarkas Command, how this could be a heck of a problem if McLean does have it. Gorkline Rampage would be bad news, too. And it looks like it is Atarkas Command. Perhaps plus one, plus one, and three damage. Yep. So that's worth six points plus fizzling a bolt. So, you know... <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot. That's, a, that's just a lot. That's an above-average turn. I believe Bound at the end of all of this is going to fall down to three. Three from the command, three from each creature. McLean. It looks like he might sacrifice that Arid Mason to play another Kurt Ape. There isn't too much of a punishment here, but Josh is going to just make sure before playing it. The only punishment that can happen here is main deck Anger of the Gods. Yeah. Which may be a strong enough argument to just leave it back. Yep. Bound, he's going to concede the game. He's got no outs. So he is down a game, and Josh McLean does win game number one here. Naya Zoo up a game over Jeskai Flash, which means we're going to turn our attention to the sideboards, and we will start with Bound, who did not get to play very many turns there. He's got some one-ups here in his sideboard. Is it Static Caster, Valor Stance, Karanos, God of the Storms, Anger of the Gods, Elspeth Sun's Champion, Celestial Purge, and Negate to go along with two to spell, two wear tear, two engineering explosives, and hey, two core Firewalkers. Although Firewalker is not great against Josh's list here, I think they're still going to come in. I, I really like Engineer Explosive in this matchup, a claim with just a lot of cheap threats here, and I think Anger of the Gods is a very good sideboard card, and... I, I wouldn't mind Elspeth Sun's champion in this matchup. It is a little bit on the expensive side, but it is it is game over if, if it shows if up. If you can get to it, it's game over. Exactly. And there's some cards in here. He, he does definitely have some cuttable cards here. Uh, things like Electrolyze are going to be tough against McLean's Sea of Three Toughness Creatures. 
Geis is same trapped, is not where Bound wants to be in the matchup. So even though Elspeth is slow, I think he's got enough inefficient cards where he can afford to bring it in. On the other side of things, Josh McLean, his 15 cards for his zoo deck. Three copies of Destructive Revelry, an Ancient Grudge, a Stony Silence, two copies of Chain of the Rocks, three copies of Core Firewalker, a Tarmogoyf, two copies of Choke, two copies of Rending Volley. I like bringing in the Tarmogoyf, I like bringing in the two copies of Choke, and I think the two copies of Rending Volley can safely come in. You don't know exactly what Bound is working with, but you can probably guess Restoration Angel, uh, Celestial Colonnade, there's some other threats in the mix. So uh, Rending Volley, probably a superior removal spell, the path to exile in this matchup. Both these players will sideboard here right here for game number two. So we will talk about season four here on the Open Series. We are, of course, here in Cincinnati next weekend. Who knows anybody? We are going to be in Worcester, Massachusetts, then Milwaukee, Indianapolis at the beginning of October for a Saturday Open, then Saturday in Atlanta, we take a little bit of time off. We go to St. Louis for a Legacy Open, Dallas and Philadelphia. After that, we go to Grand Prix, uh, Atlanta rather. More information about that event as we get a little bit closer. A Standard Open in Kansas City, Legacy in New Jersey, Standard in Denver. After that, we have the Season 4 Invitational in Las Vegas, Nevada. Standard and Modern as the Invitational formats with a two-day $20,000 Standard Open Series event December 18th, 11th through the 13th. And then to round out the year, the Players' Championship in Roanoke, Virginia at the Star City Games headquarters December 19th and 20th. Players' Championship is going to be a lot of fun, as will the rest of those dates. And for any of the main events that you do attend, we have our brand new playmat here for Season 4 of the Open Series. It is the Hoppin' Rabbit Master, Carrots and Bombs and everything else in this picture. Given the beatdowns, a play on Goblin Rabble Master. Best part of it? Free. Free. Come Got on. to sign up for any of our major Season 4 events, any of the two-day $20,000 Open Series. This comes free of charge at the event, not limited to the first X people who register. You just get it. Our good friend Hoppin' Rabbit Master, our Season 4 playmat here on the Open Series, free limited edition until December 5th. As we get ready here for game number two between Josh McLean and Eric Bound. Jessica on one side, Zoo on the other. You know, you would think that with the unbanning of Wild McCoddle, we would have seen more Zoo action. We really don't see very much of it. I know you're working on it. We have seen kind of the Naya Collective Company deck that Paul Rietzel and Matt Sperling play, but for the most part, we have not seen low to the ground Zoo beatdowns. Well, the, the deck is capable of killing on the fourth turn, uh, depending on how you build it. And so that already gives it the raw speed to hang around with the faster decks of the format. And there's some matchups where if your opponent is trying to outgrind for the Grixis control matchups, they're playing with a lot of counter spells, a lot of the slower, more versatile removal spells. The deck can be very, very good. Also, we're just seeing more copies of Colagon's Command float around as people's removal slots. And if you are packing enough three toughest creatures, Colagon's Command is nonsense. Very hard to do anything with that card. Another incentive to play Zoo because of the, the Colagon's command issue is Snapcaster Mage. If you can find enough three toughness creatures to work with, Snapcaster Mage becomes way less of an issue. Yes, they're flashing back Lightning Bolt. That, that's good for them. And certainly Bolt is still a powerful removal spell. But if Snapcaster Mage is, itself is not regularly trading with threats, then your opponent's packing with a lot of two and three mana removal spells that don't necessarily trade with your one mana spells. And uh, those are really good exchanges for decks like Zoo. We got a lot of lot of great Twitter action taking place here. First of all, Huey Jensen with just a basic thank you yeah. for our rant on Tango Lands. Well, Huey, we thank you for tuning in. And also we thank you for your love of three ninjas. Yeah. Which I found out earlier this week. He's a big fan of three ninjas and actually knows a lot of he does a lot of the quotable quotes. I just don't believe in a community as smart and creative as magics that Tangle Lands is the best we can do. There's no way. For a nickname that doesn't really inform you on how the lands work very well if you're a relatively new viewer, the nickname has to be a 10 out of 10. We cannot settle for mediocrity. Uh, we have some recommendations and, here. And settling for mediocrity is just a thing we do too often anyway. I in agree. All, in all parts of our life. I agree. Not just magic. So this is where we start drawing some lines, people. We start expecting more of each other, and we start expecting more of ourselves. Patrick Sullivan, 2020. And we just, we what do you think? What do you having think? Having bad nicknames like that. Peace Sully, P. Sully, 2020. Yeah. Your, well, comp your competition is Kanye West, for what it's worth. I mean, we could run on the same ticket. I would consider it. <laughs> 2020 rolls around. 2020 rolls around. I'll be of age to run for president. Good. I didn't know there was an age for that. 35. I had no idea. Okay. It's in the Constitution. 35 is when, back in the day, when someone was old. Got so, it. Got it. Got people it. just died a lot younger back so, then. So, so. You, you're good to go. Right. You're good to go. Uh, I will not be your running mate, but I can talk mm -hmm. to Mr. West. My people can talk to his people. I'm going to do a pretty thorough social media scrubbing of a lot uh, of things. You know, that's just all part of it. It's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of photos and things I've said floating around. we got to get that cleaned up. That's just, that's just all part of becoming a politician. That's why you hire the right people. That's right. Uh, we have... Uh, we have uh, Ben Swanson believes they should be called Countlands, like the Count from Sesame Street. 
One, two. Well, he usually counts to three two, at least. Two basic lads. No? Doesn't work for you? Yeah. I, I like where the thought is at here, at least. This one actually plays much better than Tango does. I'm going to get that. You know, I, gotta, I, uh, I know someone in graphic design. Eric, I'm going to take a mulligan here. I could see we could, it could be Sullivan 2020, P. Sully 2020 with some flames around it. Mm -hmm. I think that to communicate to the widest possible audience, you're probably best served not having flames on your campaign decals. Do you think that's a bad idea? I, I'm just saying that I have not seen many politicians do it. Usually you want to stick with red, white, and blue colors, some innocuous or asinine catchphrase, like we can do it, or making America great again, or whatever. You got to find something stupid that resonates. OK, got it. So my plan was burning down the problems of the United Not States. Not great. That's, that's a little lengthy. OK. OK. I, I like start expecting more out of ourselves. <laughs> but that doesn't fit on a button. That's a, <laughs> that's a little too long. Make it an acronym, right. and it'll be fine. Here's an Aaron Mesa for Eric. He's on five cards. He's found a hand that he's happy enough with. For McLean, he also has an Aaron Mesa. The question is, does he have a one drop? It appears that he does, as Josh is going to go down to at least 19, but probably 17. His deck's got a lot of one drops. I'm counting 12, 15, 20. He's got 20. 20 is a lot. You've already got your hashtag going, by the way. <laughs> Peace only 2020. People are on board. Experiment one. Did you ever try this one drop in your zoo deck? I don't have enough creatures. Experiment one's definitely a fine card to play. And McLean's playing with way more creatures than I am. I would not be able to regularly get this up to 3-3. Three, three, and I don't want threats that trade with Snapcaster Mage. McLean's addressing it a different way by having just Loam Lion and Curd Ape and Wild McConnell and this. He even has Thalia as one of his threats. Thalia also good against Snapcaster Mage. He's yep. a 2-1 first striker. If you're going to play Zoo, you got to make sure that Snapcaster Mage is not two for one you a bunch. That's, that's part of the recipe here. Uh, McLean and I are doing it different ways, but it's the same logic. Bound taking a look at Experiment 1. Don't see this one a lot in Modern, but it can grow to be a three-power creature pretty easily. Now, Bound does have a copy of Lightning Bolt in hand. There's also an island, a Restoration Angel, and an Engineer Explosive. So though he did Mulligan down to five, he's still doing OK. McLean figuring out how he wants to move forward on his second turn of the game. Engineered Explosives is very good against these style of decks. Especially Josh's build. Yeah. He is one drop heavy. 21 drops. Josh is going to search up a land here with the wind up teeth. You can imagine he's going to go down to 14. So there's a Temple Garden. We'll see what's next here for him. It'll be a wild Nakato. That one's all grown up. Experiment one's going to grow up as well. The follow up is another wild Nakato. And all of a sudden, we've got three three power creatures out here. Well, things are looking good for engineered explosives here. Yeah. Lightning Bolt's going to take care of experiment one with the evolve trigger on the stack. And now, Bound can play a land, blow up two Nakatos, and, you know, he's kind of right back in this. The thing. leftovers in Bound's hand are about as good as you can ask for here. He's got. A third land, now a fourth land. Yep. Engineer Explosives to clear the board. A Restoration Angel, which, you know, being down on five cards, saying go with four mana up, could just be nothing, yep. you know? And McLean just might make some pretty aggressive attacks the next couple of turns, and uh, it could be a really good spot for Restoration Angel as well. Island to play here for Eric. Engineer Explosives for one. Now, if I'm Eric, I kind of want to blow this now because of that fetch land? Not only that, not only can something happen to your fetch land like a mind sensor, he, if McLean has Boros Charm here. That's bad. It is, it's not in his list. Yep. He has Gore Clan Rampager sure. where in, in this spot as you know, raw power and more damage, but a lot of things can go wrong here. I was thinking, I was thinking maybe you know, he sacks the fetch land, Destructive Revelry comes in. Now, Josh probably doesn't board Destructive Revelry because he didn't really see much of a reason to have in the last mm -hmm. game, but Boros Charm is a, a perfectly good reason why Eric probably want to blow in your main phase because Boros Charm going indestructible, bad news. A lot of my wins that I've gotten on Magic Online have to do with someone getting too fancy with removal and things like Boros Charm and Atarka Command blowing up what they were trying to do. So you want to err on the side of main phasing your removal spells against these zoo lists because they have a lot of tricks uh, to be even sweepers.
Tarmogoyf's here. It's a 4-5. We're heading back Eric's way. See if he can find an answer to that. Looks like the Dillian Click was the draw to go along with Restoration Angel on the Scalding Tarn. There is the Scalding Tarn. And this is a great spot for Tarmogoyf. These smaller zoo lists, Restoration Angel, set aside any synergies. A 3-4 flyer blocks everything at value. Yeah. So uh, McLean just having the biggest thing on the block here is really good for him right now. Yeah, we've seen actually Tarmogoyf kind of work its way out of zoo decks. You want to be a little bit faster and more burn oriented. But right now Tarmogoyf is looking pretty good for Josh. So it looks like he's going to sacrifice this wooded foothills. Looks like Goblin Guide in hand here for McLean. But he'll wait on the sacrifice. Draw a card. And it looks like Bound in the draw step is going to cast Mendelian Click. Mendelian Click, pretty mediocre in this matchup. It's not great. And I think what Bound is hoping to set up here is, you know, I play Mendelian Click, get the best card of your hand. Next turn, I get to chump block the Tarmogoyf, blink out with Restoration Angel, the Mendelian Click, get another card out of your hand. Now I've got some stuff in play, but that's a very hard angle to try to attack Zoo from because it's so easy for this deck to kill a Vendillion Click. Click likely to target McLean. Don't think Eric has any interest in targeting himself and turning Restoration Angel into a new card. McLean's hand, he's got a Lightning Bolt over there. Tarkus commands. Lightning Bolt's going to go after Vendillion Click. Get that out of the way now, Will Josh. You see the hand, Tarkus Command, Gorkline Rampage, Rank Goblin Guy. Pretty good hand here from McLean. It's hard to, to click these decks effectively because the pieces are so redundant. I, I guess what Bound can do here is take Gore Clan Rampager and then hope next turn he gets to use Restoration Angel to block Goblin Guide for profit, even through a Tarkus command. And then if his draw steps cooperate, all he's really got to do is answer the Tarmogoyf. But you've got to do something effective with this Restoration Angel. And I don't think you can just take the Goblin Guy because it's so likely McLean simply draws a creature to replace it. So to me, Rampager feels like the card. Well, Bowen wants to make sure he knows exactly how effective a Tarkus Command will be in the situation. So he'll take a look. The very powerful Pro, -tar Pro Tour winning card, excuse me. A lot of things to keep in mind with this card. I know you play four of these in your zoo deck. Oh, yeah. Whether, I mean, if you're playing as a burn strategy, this card's really, really good. And if you're playing as a creature strategy, it's also really, really good. Yeah. So it, it cuts on both sides. A lot of positives to be had with the Tarkus Command. Have yet to put the land into play. Still waiting for that one. I know, the land plus Searing Blaze. Surprise Searing, 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 Searing Blaze, yep. Surprise Searing Blaze. Yep. It hasn't happened yet. Still waiting. I expect, the, I expect the Magic Online photo of that. Yep. Right on Twitter. Sneaky Searing Blaze. <laughs> Getting a, let's call it Treetop Village. Okay. Raging Ravine. Oh, attacking Raging Ravine thing. with the token, with the counter on. Oh, baby. Oh, Bound does have some options here, but as you mentioned, it's hard to even, it's hard to poke a hole in this. I, I think it's got to be. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the selection from Bound. I think it needed to be Rampager. Now his Restoration Angel provides no defense. Sure, sure. Because. He can't block, he can't even block Goblin Guide now. Nope. If Tarmogoy was coming in the red zone and Goblin Guide was not played pre-combat, I would be feeling a little scared. Yeah. Here's an attack for four, because maybe another Tarmogoy's on the way now. McLean got to sacrifice that wooded foothills. All of a sudden, Restoration Angel's value has gone way down. Yeah, nothing to do with it now. Here's a basic forest. This feels very much like Tarmogoyf. Maybe Thalia, but it's a two-drop nonetheless. I think my preference there would have been Josh for Josh to fetch another red source of mana, as now he doesn't have access to Goblin Guide plus Rampager next turn. Not sure if he wants to do it. Maybe he's playing around a sweeper, but... I suppose with Bound going out of his way to fetch basics in spots where he could have gotten dual lands, it's possible McLean just has a sense that Blood Moon could be a possibility here, wants to protect himself from that. We're going McLean's way. Bound Straw was just a lightning bolt. McLean with that Gore Clan Rampager, and you can see just how much trouble the Gore Clan Rampager is causing now. Yep. 
Now, if McLean plays the guy before Connor, it looks like McLean has picked up a path, so now he can still make this attack safely. Sure. Trigger for Goblin Guy. Take a look. The castle. A Ganjo castle. A cons of Tarkir state. Excuse me. Pardon me. Champions of Kamigawa staple. Yep. I'm getting these sets mixed up today. Combo with Isamaru. Combo is a little strong there. But you know, I'll give it to you. It's not not a combo. Yeah. Will Eric play Resto or will we go with Lightning Bolt? Looks like he's going to go with Resto. It kind of has to be Restoration Angel now because this is probably the one opportunity Bound has to block before Gore Clan Rampager becomes a consideration again. Mm -hmm. Now we know McLean's drawn path and it doesn't really matter all that much. But this would be the best shot. Because Bound has Bolt in hand. Yep. So now he can, he can try to do this now and then, you know, bolt something next turn on his own turn and Rampager can't protect it because Rampager can only be used while Josh is attacking. Only four basics here for Eric. Two mountain, two islands, a mountain, and a plain. So nothing to search up with the Path to Exile. Perhaps just checking his options on what his best draws may be. But even a card like Anger of the Gods right now, it's, it's fine, but he also doesn't have the ability to cast it even if he drew it because he only has one mountain out there. So he's in some real trouble. He takes a lot of damage on the attack too, by the way. Yep. Now, it's a little worrisome for McLean to see the Ganjo Castle drawn because now... Uh, Supreme Verdict or Wrath of God could be on the radar. Mm -hmm. I don't think McLean has a lot of follow-up here, but he's it's got to be now or never. Lightning Heels to draw here for Bound. Uh-oh. Well, it's a Gore Clan Rampage he knows about, so it's time to go to the attack step. Anger the Gods and stop card. But Helix and Bolt Neither will be useful right now because of the power of Blood Rush. That is going to do it. Josh McLean going to win this match here over Eric Bound. Naya Zoo will take care of Jeskai Flash two games to zero. And McLean off to a nice start here. Now, in, in fairness there, if Bound goes and casts the, the Helix on his own turn, McLean can still attack for lethal and yep. use the Rampager. So, you know, it's not like... Uh, it was not just a straight misplay there, as Bound probably has to try to represent some degree of strength there, but yeah. too much to overcome. Uh, threats were a little too efficient. Bound's mulligan to five, certainly not helping, helping matters either. Josh McLean wins this match. He moves on to four and oh with Naya Zoo. Perhaps we'll see more of him this week, and we don't.